These are the parts for the scrolling LED badge. There's a multitude of them on eBay. I bought this from Tmall for about $15 for the badge, uh, the associated cable. This is a USB to serial converter and a mini CD-ROM with the software. This cable is proprietary. It's an incredibly small connector on one end that plugs into the badge. The back side of this badge has seven push buttons. That's the style I use here. Some are available with three buttons and there are some different versions of it. This is the one that I used to hack, hack this thing. Uh, you, it uses normally a small uh, CR 2032 3 volt lithium battery but once you get once you have this all connected to a pick you don't need it because it, the pick will supply 5 volts. I gave up, use, gave up trying to use these push buttons to program this thing. It's, it's uh, a little bit too much for this old gray mind of mine. And not only with that, once it was programmed, even if you program it with the software, trying to select various messages with these push buttons, again, just a real PETA. So I decided that I would uh, hack into it, find out what the software protocol is, and interface it with a PIC. I used a serial port monitor <clears throat> along with the programming software and actually program pro messages in the badge and I was using the serial monitor then, serial port monitor, and I got their protocol which I was able to uh, pretty much decode and uh, port it into the, into the memory of a PIC. It's, the, the software, the hex code in their software makes absolutely no sense. Uh, the hex code for letters and numbers absolutely confusing. There is no relationship whatsoever to a standard ASCII format. And they also transmit a checksum. I haven't been able to figure that out yet. If I could, it would be much. I could do a lot more with it as far as doing programming internally to the PIC. As it is, I can put in messages and then select them via a push button or internal timers or whatever else. But uh, it's been it's pretty flexible just the way it is. This is my prototyping board that I use for developing all sorts of software with various picks. The pick I'm using here is an 18F2520. Uh, very, a whole lot of uh, flash memory so it's very flexible in that regard. It runs out. You've got it running at 20 megahertz on a uh, RC. I have a zip socket in here, so it makes it real easy to program these picks. And it also has an in-circuit serial programmer here, port here. Power supply comes in here. I attach a small board for breadboarding other hardware circuits. So it, uh, it's a really nice little board that I use for a lot of different applications. This is another board. I made this board a long time ago, for uh, again, for using with picks. It has... Uh, it has a row of, of four momentary push buttons, eight LEDs, a row of slide switches, a small pot for analog work, and a female connector, eight connections, so I can put in jumpers to connect it to the port pins on the uh, pick, and then a plus and minus uh, power cable. Power for my little projects I use is just a simple battery pack I made, two rechargeable lithium ion batteries, Give, uh, and I, pl I got a little plug on there I can plug into my prototype board. Makes for a nice little portable power supply. This is one other part that I had to make. It's an adapter for the USB cable. This end is just a female USB connector. And on that little board I have two resistors in series to drop the voltage from the pick to the badge from 5 volts down to about 3 volts. I noticed that when I was programming originally from the USB to serial converter, it only output 3 volts to the, to the badge. So I thought I'd be on the safe side. But from what I, what I am almost certain now, that I wouldn't need those resistors. I could program it directly with 5 volts. But anyway, it has the USB connector here, and then there's some little uh, pins on this end that I put jumpers on to connect to my PIC prototyping board. Okay, we're ready to go to show you the display in action. Give it some power. And the display initializes at the last uh, display it had on before power cycling. 
Now one thing I've noticed on reviewing these videos is that the display shows an awful lot of jumpiness or jitterness and it's really quite smooth in real time. But anyway, the first message here we show is hack using PIC Basic Pro. Now if I push the first push button we'll switch over to the ubiquitous Hello World and it's followed by a number one in brackets. I have three versions of this, number one, number two, and number three using some variables just to show the flexibility of programming. Second push button, wish everyone a Merry Christmas. It, uh, it will continue to scroll until you change the message. So let's OK, Happy New Year. And once again, uh, continue to scroll. Let's go back to the first message, Hello World, but now it's a number two. I'm able to change that number in a variable. That's about the only changes I can make. I haven't figured out how to use the extra wide characters or to slow the scroll speed. And part of their protocol uses a checksum and I haven't figured that out yet. But so far I could at least program a number of messages. And of course my favorite, once again, hack using PIC Basic Pro. We'll go back to one. Hello world. The last one is number three. Click it again. Now it's back to a one. And once again, we will say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and go back to Hacked using Prick Basic Pro. Great software, uh, made it relatively easy to develop these messages once I was able to interpret the uh, protocol from the, from the badge itself.